And today we're going to delve deeper into the top down and bottom up estimation. So let's have a quick look at what's this top down estimation as, as the term says, it's looking at the big picture view and trying to break it down into, into, into parts. So that's the kind of aspect of uh, the functional decomposition or even looking at something as a big picture, as a competitive benchmark, and then trying to analyze that and say, okay, this could be similar size, so it would cost so much, or it would be so much of effort. So this uh, people would call it as uh, estimating by analogy. That means you are trying to compare this existing one with something that you already did before. So you are trying to actually assess the size based on something you already know. And uh, this is obviously as it, as it is uh, based on comparison, you don't have to really get into the details. So obviously it is relatively quicker and uh, easier to do compared to the other types of estimation. And this is really good for early life cycle phases of a project. So if you are just about to start a project, like for example, you're just about to um, look at the, um, the project to do with developing a website, an e-commerce website, or web application, or you're trying to develop a mobile application, this is a kind of a good place to start with where you just take a, a guess off in terms of how much effort and what's the size that is really involved in this, how much money would you need to you know, park aside for developing this. So it could be used in the pre-sales or even before the project has started, or once the project started in the early stages of the requirements capture. So that's when you can try and you know, have this kind of estimation methodology used. And it really depends on the actual skill on, and, the, and the kind of uh, expertise of the estimator. If the persons have got a um, good skill, they've been fairly well experienced, they've done this before already, they've developed about four or five different websites already, the team has been working together over a long period of time, then it is better, it is actually you know, better for them to come up with a top-down estimate than somebody relatively new to this because they cannot have anything to compare this with. So there's no benchmark for them. But as for us, you know, for the people who have actually done that and been there, done that and seen this, they've got some kind of a, already a kind of a rough imagination, rough picture in their mind as to how this would evolve based on that they can come up with this. So again, as I mentioned, this is based on the similarity. You're trying to compare and contrast with something that you already have. So it's based on the sizing again. The first thing is the size that, that is evolving, then based on the size, the effort, and then the, uh, the schedule and the cost. Um, and then it actually tries and look at things which you can clearly see. It, it's for example, oh, I've got a homepage. Yeah, I need to have a homepage, I need to have a shopping cart, I need to have a catalog for products to actually be able to be shown. So I'm just using some things based on the popular um, stuff that is already available in the market. If you want to come up with something innovative, um, then it might be a really difficult exercise to actually get involved in. And that's where I think the, uh, the other type, the bottom-up estimation would really help. So for the top-down estimates, you bear in mind that you need to have something that is that you can connect with, that you can relate to, something that is already tried and tested. Then you can actually come up with something. So for example, just uh, a case in point is the COVID-19 uh, virus um, the, that, that is around and then people had been working on the vaccine for this, um, for this particular virus. Every country has got their own teams working on uh, coming up with a vaccine for this. So they come up with say that, okay, I think, uh, yeah, it's coming in like next month. It has been, come, people have been, every government, every health secretary, health minister from, you know, each and every country comes up with a, um, with a statement saying that, yeah, yeah, it'll be ready. The vaccine would be ready like two months ago, three months ago, they've been saying it will come by this time. And then now they're saying it would come in the next two months. So you can actually get to see that they're basing their estimate. They're actually trying to come up with an, uh, a, a rough estimate in terms of when the vaccine would get ready based on their experience from the other types of vaccines already, other types of uh, uh, diseases that they had uh, come across and the teams had worked on that come up with a vaccine. But bear in mind, it's, it's not the realistic thing because the, the goalpost keeps moving from one month to two, two months, three months, and now they're talking about early next year. So you can understand that they're actually trying to fight a devil which they have not seen. So in the same context, understand that these estimates are not coming from people who are actually working on the vaccine. They're actually coming from the top level. And that's the reason why 
when you look at all of these kind of uh, you know statements released by the health ministers and the health secretaries it's, it's a senior management view of things it's their perspective of what could be when the vaccine could be introduced but it's not the actual you know for example it's not the researcher who is actually working in a lab if you ask them they'll say oh you know what it won't come till uh, 2022 i'm just telling you some some roughly because they know the intricacies they know effort involved they know the kind of complexities in coming up with a vaccine to this kind of uh, a massive uh, uh, pandemic so what is important here is that you need to take the top down estimate with a pinch of salt so because it is coming in from people in the fairly top level uh, pe people who may not know and who may not really do the work they are not going to actually roll up their sleeves and actually do the coding or do the actual piece of work so you need to really take that with that kind of an approach you should not take it to the um, you know real uh, uh, deal on that one on the on the top down and what really helps is a bottom up estimation which is actually kind of what what i was talking about in terms of the team delivering the team does the estimate the team does the uh, develop and the team does the delivery so the ownership is around the team and the people who actually do the work so here in this case you got each and everything actually kind of broken down into different um, you know individual elements so sometimes it could be broken down into the work so what we call as work breakdown structure so which is very popular i'm going to discuss that in greater detail in the next few slides when we go each and every methodology and then it can also be broken down by modules so you actually have got like a big product so it could be for example the e-commerce uh, website we were talking about it could actually be broken down in terms of um, modules or architectures or functional levels so you can actually have something like okay shopping cart um, and then you can have something like a catalog as one module and the third one could be payment processing and the fourth one could be order processing so each of these are different modules are different architectural entities that could be developed on their own so we can actually have the 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 breakdown happening in in detail and then from each of these within each of these will then have the respective again for the breakdown and what does a catalog have a catalog has got uh, the items shown on the pages so you should have page and then within that again you will have um, how many items will be shown on the page and what are the kind of items do you have thumbnails so the detailing will go on and on and on. So the team actually delves deeper and deeper and deeper. And then they come up with a kind of a proper requirements to be able to actually show. And that's where the con cards, conversations and, and confirmations, the three C's of user stories would really help. So you're actually trying to actually get into deeper and deeper detailing about that. So, and that's when, once you have that, then you can actually come up with a, a clear picture. Like for example, yesterday we were talking about painting the house just by looking at the house a painter could actually say oh yeah it's, it's about two bedroom and, and a hall and a kitchen it should roughly take about 10000 pounds uh, is what an estimate an experienced painter could actually say without even looking at all the dimensions but then if you really go into the details and then you give the contract to them or you ask them to come over then they start actually taking down the measurements the dimensions of each of these then the detailing would come do you have one coat two coats of the paint which paint blah 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 all of those would come into the picture and then that's when the real you know, detailing of the requirements would come in. And from there, from that point, you're actually trying to get into the specifics of the work and board and the, the schedule and the cost and, and the resources required and all, the, all of that stuff. So that's where, uh, that's the reason why this kind of bottom-up estimation is really uh, more accurate. It's uh, definitely more precise than the top-down estimation because you actually have got better detailing better picture clearer picture in terms of the you know the specifics and the components within each of the tasks and then the example for this is basically the development team we were talking about that you know the development team in the agile development projects they typically use like for example planning poker or you know, things like these the cards they can actually kind of use the planning poker to be able to actually discuss in detail the requirement and then what is the back end? Do we have a database? Do we have the tables already? If not, do we have to create table. What kind of a table is needed? And do we have all the fields? How many fields does this table have? Um, are the fields, what kind of data um, type are these fields? Is it a varchar or is it, a, um, is it a, an integer? So all of these, is it a string? How can we actually play around with that? So all of these actually detailing would actually come in in the discussions of the developers. So they're not going to talk about the 30,000 feet overview, they're talking about the specific field level discussions. And that's where 
the detailing will go and that's where the the real you know sizing and the effort would come in so understand we're going to discuss this in detail in the next few slides about the work breakdown structure and the user story points and the planning poker but um, at this point of time just be clear that the bottom up estimation whatever estimates that you come up with is definitely the it's not going to be the same as the top down estimate because there are two different approaches there are two different ways of arriving at that perhaps two different roads that you would take you know to to reach some certain goal but then the goal may not be always the same because you you end up somewhere else than what you want it to be because where you want it to go because the approaches are different the outcomes are different the people who actually do these estimates they are also different same people so what you need to understand in that context is how you would need to take the top down estimate with a pinch of salt but you need to actually look at the bottom up estimate in a very very detailed way and you should actually kind of appreciate that if it's taking fairly longer time then so be it so be it because the development team needs so much of time to actually kind of break down the whole complexity into the fundamental modules and then each module having separate features each feature having separate epics each each epic going down to stories each story into further level of uh, you know acceptance criteria and then tasks and then further sort of activities so you actually get to see the detailing in the bottom up estimation and that's why it's going to be far more accurate and far more precise and perhaps more realistic i cannot say that it is actually the same as actuals because obviously there are so many variables in that so it's far more accurate in terms of the 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 variability so perhaps it could be about between 5% to 30% of variation when you do a bottom up estimation to the actuals whereas in the top down it could be anywhere between 30% to 60% because you don't have all the details in there so that's the kind of difference that you have between the top down and bottom up estimates so it's important for you to understand what are, what is the kind of methodology you're trying to use in this context